Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to talk about the reactions of alcohols. So we're going to look at the there's four main categories of reactions that we're going to focus on. We're going to look at combustion, dehydration, substitution reactions with a with a hydrogen halide, and then oxidation and reduction of alcohols. So firstly, let's look at combustion. Okay, it's probably the one that we're most familiar with, thinking about everyday kind of contexts. We've done some practical work at this stage, looking at measuring the enthalpy of combustion. But when we're talking about combustion, we're meaning burning in the presence of oxygen. Okay, so typically, so looking at a reaction like this one of ethanol. Burning ethanol in the presence of oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water um, as our usual kind of typical products. The reason I say typical products is that depending on whether we have, um, how much oxygen is available, we, we can undergo what's called complete or incomplete combustion. So take the same reaction that we have here. If we restrict the oxygen a little bit, then what we end up forming is carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. You see, we've got the same amount of water, but we've, we've, we're changing this product here. And let's say we've severely restricted the oxygen, but there's still a little bit, so the reaction can go on, that we get the formation of carbon as a solid here, that's soot. So if you use the yellow safety flame with a Bunsen burner, then ultimately this is what we're making because we're restricting the, the flow of oxygen, so you're getting incomplete combustion. Okay, and so the, the, whether you have complete or incomplete combustion affects how effective that combustion is in terms of energy output and in terms of the production of, of more toxic kind of products like carbon monoxide instead. So that's combustion. This is we're focusing on it with alcohols, but we've looked at it before with alkanes and, and other hydrocarbons generally. Dehydration. So dehydration is where we're taking an alcohol and we're turning it into an alkene. We've looked in the past at hydration reactions um, when we're thinking about turning an alkene into an alcohol. Um, so so we're looking at reversing that process using a concentrated acid catalyst. Now the reason that we have that concentrated acid catalyst is that it it helps to uh, allow this OH group to be removed. Now we're not going to go into the, the, the nitty gritty of exactly how that comes off, um, but essentially that the use of the acid means that this, there's an intermediate step when this OH group leaves first and then before this hydrogen leaves that then um, it, it helps to make that more stable. And it kind of it just kind of facilitates that process um, that that H plus ion, so concentrated acid. Um, so needless to say, on a, on a practical level, it's quite dangerous because these acids are you know very corrosive. But that's what's necessary to make this reaction happen. All right, so now we're going to look at substitution reactions. Probably one of the more complicated ones we're going to focus on in this video. So bear with me. So we're looking at the reaction of an alcohol with a hydrogen halide like HCl, HBr. HI. Um, and what's happening is that the OH group is being substituted with the halide, the, the halogen atom. Okay, so if we're looking at this here, we've got an alcohol with some R, kind of whatever group that might look like, um, and then we've got a, uh, our hydrogen halide, HX, and we're seeing that the X and the OH are swapping places. So we form water and then the, the, the halogenated um, compound. Okay, and so then depending on what uh, our alcohol is like, that would, it actually kind of goes through two different uh, mechanisms or two different specific step approaches. We get, um, so depending on if we're primary, secondary, or tertiary. So if it's prime, um, so whether it's primary, secondary, or tertiary affects whether we get, we get a direct substitution kind of um, step where the, the X and the OH are, are both kind of like one's leaving and one's going at the same time or we actually get an intermediate step forming what's called a carbocation. Now it's not carbocation as much as it looks like that, but it's actually kind of a carbon positive ion as a middle step. Um, and so we've got these little labels here, SN2 and SN1. We're not going to go into specifically what that refers to so much. It's just kind of a chemist's shorthand for these substitution reactions. The one and the two relates to kind of the, the rates of reaction um, again, we're not going to go into that. Um, but so, um, we need an acid catalyst in both situations. So first, look, we're going to have a look at the carbocation kind of intermediate step, which happens more with tertiary and secondary 
alcohols. So what happens is that the, the firstly that the OH group accepts an H plus from a hydronium ion that's nearby. Okay, so what we have that means that we get this um, protonated we say OH group over here. Now what that does is if, if you kind of ignore the carbon there, that looks very much like a water molecule, but it's a water molecule that's kind of attached already. That's part of the, the purpose of this step. What happens then is that in a, the slowest kind of rate determining step that that OH um, to this group actually kind of detaches, that there's sufficient energy that it detaches. Um, and then what that leaves is that this carbon group is, forms a, this positive charge. Um, because this carbon only has three bonds to other things, because that extra connection has been taken away by the oxygen as it's left. Now what that means is that then this positive ion, which is highly unstable, will then react further with something else that's negative that can connect onto it. And that we're doing it in a solution that has halide ions like chloride um, that can readily connect onto there, and we have a new connection where the chlorine has substituted for what was the OH to begin with. Okay, so this is primarily for tertiary and secondary um, carbons because what that does is that means that the carbocation bit in the middle is more stable with these types of alcohols. So they tend to prefer this sort of mechanism. It's more stable to go by this way. Whereas for uh, primary and then methyl, like methanol um, alcohols, what we get is a direct substitution technique. So where the, the halide ion, the X minus, so chloride or bromide, it attacks, we say that it attacks the carbon that's got the OH group on it. Now, just like before, this OH group has become protonated. That is, it's gained that H plus from the acid catalyst. And what that means then is that this direct attack then pushes that group out um, because this becomes more um, favoured or preferred. And then the, because the water is very stable to leave on its own, that then this reaction can happen fairly um, effectively. Now, like I said, this only happens with primary um, alcohols and then also methanol because other carbon groups get in the way of this, this attacking process. That There's got to physically be room for the, one ion, the ion to come from the opposite side of the OH group to be able for it to be able to detach and go the other way. Um, and so then it kind of limits the effectiveness that, that it happens. But it happens quite effectively with this technique when a carbocation wouldn't be very stable in this situation. So it, it, we see that there's these two, well not competing mechanisms, but two alternative mechanisms that come into place depending on which type of alcohol that we're dealing with. Now we're going to have a look at oxidation and reduction reactions with alcohols. So these are really, really useful to keep in mind, seeing that we can actually turn one member of one family into a member of a different family by chemical reaction. Okay, so alcohols will oxidise. And in, depending on what kind of alcohol that we have, they'll oxidize to form either an aldehyde or a ketone. So firstly, primary alcohols that will form aldehydes. So a primary alcohol here like propanoanol, that then at this section here, that where that oxygen connection is, that turns into a double bond. And so we get propanol, the aldehyde. And we have, the acid, we have an acidified dichromate solution as our catalyst. So because the dichromate ion will reduce um, and in, in doing so cause this to oxidize. So you can see here that it's like these, these two hydrogens that I'm pointing to at the moment. It's like they get stripped out as a result of the reduction process and then leaving a double bond. Now if we move that OH group along to the carbon number two, making a secondary alcohol, go through the same process, we would form a ketone instead of an aldehyde. Now we're going to look at aldehydes and ketones a bit more in detail. Um, so this is kind of something that will the context will make a bit more sense as we as we go further through the course. But the same sort of thing that these two hydrogens, the one connected to the oxygen and the other one on that same carbon, are being stripped away. We form a double bond in there. It's called a ketone because this group here is not on the end like it is here, but it's sandwiched between two carbons. But now if we look at tertiary alcohols, which have three carbon groups attached to the carbon with the OH group, like we have here, we get no oxidation reaction at all. So tertiary alcohols do not oxidize full stop. Now the reason for that, if, if you want to look at these previous examples of what I was trying to point out, is that in each of these situations you need another hydrogen on that same carbon in order for this changing process to work. Whereas in this situation there is no other hydrogen. You've got the one on the OH group, 
but you don't have the partner that it needs for this process to happen. So you get no further reaction going on. Okay. Um, and because also that hydrogen's taken away and with that extra covalent bond is what we need in order to make the double bond here. The car if the carbon group can't be taken away in the same fashion, that then we don't end up with a different product. Now, as we've looked at in the past, I realize redox is a long time ago in our reckoning, perhaps, um, but that we can also look at it going the other way. So if we've seen alcohols can oxidize and form aldehydes and ketones, then it stands to reason if we start with an aldehyde or a ketone, we can reduce them to go backwards. And that is exactly what is able to happen. So we can reverse these reactions and look at reduction instead. We can take an aldehyde and we can reduce it, and we're doing so form a primary alcohol. So we can see that it that it's it's we have made the same stuff we started with. Likewise, you can take a ketone and reduce it to form a secondary alcohol. Okay, so it's like we're adding those two hydrogens back in, one here and one on the other side to form a new thing. Okay, same thing, a hydrogen here and up here to form our secondary alcohol. Now, it also stands to reason that because tertiary alcohols couldn't oxidize, that you can't reduce something to make a tertiary alcohol, which is the case. So we can only form either a primary or a secondary alcohol using this step. Now, the reagent that we're using here is this chemical here, technically, well, the name that we often use is called sodium um, tetraborohydride. Um, and this is not its technical IUPAC name, but it's just, that's this is the chemical that we use to because it makes that reduction happen. Now, you notice these are not balanced chemical equations um, because the, the mechanism of oxidation and reduction in these situations is, is quite complex. So, and you don't need to be able to know that. Um, you just need to be able to identify that, yes, reduction can make this happen, oxidation can make it go the other way, and being able to predict what products we would make when we're doing oxidation or reduction, just like any of the other reactions. Okay, so we looked firstly at combustion, burning the alcohol in the presence of oxygen. Depending on how much oxygen we actually have, we can get complete or incomplete combustion. We saw dehydration where we can turn an alcohol into an alkene using a concentrated acid catalyst reforming that double bond, the opposite of hydration. We looked at um, oxidation, oh sorry, substitution reactions with two mechanisms, looking at direct substitution called SN2 and using a carbocation intermediate step called SN1. And then also looking at oxidation and reduction, going from alcohols to aldehydes or ketones and vice versa. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.